Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to be talking about winnowing the massive field of 2020 Democrat primary candidates, okay? Um, the reason why we're going to do this is uh, we are here. We've had our first debate, right? And right now there's 25 candidates, and we as Democrat voters need to begin to do the winnowing ourselves to say, I have some categories. I'm going to put some people in these categories and these people are gone. I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about them anymore. I'm not going to think about them anymore. I'm not going to get data on them anymore. I'm not going to listen to a 15 or 20 minute video on these people because I want to pay attention to the important, uh, to the, the absolutely actual important, um, news that is relevant to the 2020 U.S. Democrat primary, okay? So let's talk about winnowing, all right? So one, I just want to say, so I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to give you four groups of winnowing, four winnowing groups, and I'm going to give you three examples for every single one of these absolutely key winnowing groups. But when that winnowing is done, I really believe right now it, we, we're looking at the fast five, we have five actual candidates in this in this election, right? I'll give them to you right now. Bernie, uh, uh, Biden, Sanders, Warren, Harris, and Yang. That's it. Right? That's all that's, that's all that's really there, okay? Now, that's a, lot, a larger conversation on, on why it's just those five, but I'm going to give you a really good idea with the winnowing today. We're going to we're going to cut out a minimum 12 candidates, and I think it'll only be even broader the cut of who we're taking out. Um, because you'll see some other, you will identify other people who will drop into those, into these winnowing categories. So let's talk about the winnowing categories. I'm going to use a mnemonic to remember all four of my winnowing categories. So it's going to be a, a dancing liver dancing down a railroad, holding a bass in one hand and a Pepsi in the other. All right, let's, let's get into it. All right. So the, the liver, the dancing liver is, is going down a railroad track. Okay. All right. Let's talk about third rail candidates. There are at least three third rail candidates. I'll give them to you. And let's talk about what a third rail is. Third rail is a it's a known um, it's ve- it's a very powerful known subject within um, within politics. Okay, third rail is you know on a railroad there is a third rail for uh, for a number of these uh, specific um, what's the oh yeah. For for any for a train that runs on electrical on electrical power, there's a third rail and it's electrified. The third rail is electrified. Okay, and that means if you're at the railroad, first of all, if, if you're a human being and you're at the railroad and you're not in a car, you're not in a locomotive, you're not in a rail car, you're not in a passenger car, that's an incredibly dangerous place to be because you can get hit by a train, right? Um, but it's even more dangerous than just standing on the tracks. If you touch an electri- a third rail, an electrified rail, you will die. You will die of electrocution, okay? Now, this is a known term in politics, and it's saying there are certain issues, there are certain subjects there are um, that are a third rail, right? And if you touch them in politics, you will die. One of the most, fa- like, politically... One of the most famous third rails is Social Security. You cannot touch... Third rail... Social Security is untouchable. Like, if you come at people and say, hey, I'm going to get rid of your your Social Security, you're dead. You're dead in the water. You're never going to win anything, right? And the reason why is uh, senior citizens are... It's almost a one-to-one on seniors. Senior citizens vote like crazy, right? They, it's almost... Uh, it's like a... You know, those Venn diagrams, there might be the tiniest sliver that is not... Um, that of senior citizens that vote, but senior citizens vote, okay? So that is the most famous third rail. But let's talk about the three third rail candidates we have in this election. Boom, Jay Inslee. Uh, his third rail topic is climate change. I am convinced now, I didn't realize this until I saw Jay Inslee, climate change is a third rail topic. It, it, people don't realize this. They think it's important to the Democrats. It is not important to the Democrats at the macro level, and the reason why is I think they have quickly realized it is a third rail topic. Okay, so uh, so here's here's climate change in a in a nutshell, and why it's such a huge problem for the Democrats. You have to truly, fully embrace that it is a crisis, and if it's an actual crisis, you got to tell people, hey, you know, we're going to have to turn the economy upside down. 
right? We're going to have to build walls around all our coastal cities. We're going to have to put out industries, fossil fuel industries, that have done uh, business for centuries that are integral to the, na to the history of this nation. And guess what? When we do all that work, if any of the countries out there go, you know, uh, I don't care about climate change, half the work we're going to be, that will, if China says we opt out, we don't care, right? We're going to just pollute all we want. Then half the work we do isn't even going to matter, right? Like, so like, so you have to admit it's a crisis and then all the party's over, right? And every, everybody's got to like buckle up and be serious about climate change or you have to just admit, hey, we should do something about this. It's a 50-year away problem. People are like, I don't care about problems 50 years from now. It's it's a third rail. Nobody cares about it at the macro level. And it is going to kill Jay Inslee. He, 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 that guy is just like, like, and and he's, he's holding on to climate change and it is shocking him while we talk, right? Like it's, climate change is a third rail topic. Uh, and the other thing is, that's the other thing is you lose jobs, period. Like you do. You lose tons and tons and tons of jobs and not just crappy jobs, but crazy good jobs. Like, you know, just a lot of them. Right. And, and it's, it's just, it's no fun. It's just a terrible, no fun topic. All right. All right. Here's the next, uh, here's the next third rail. Eric Swalwell. Love this guy. He's running on gun control. Are you out of your mind, man? Like this is, this is America, dude. People love their guns, period. Right. And I mean, if you come on, like, it's just common sense. Like, we have had this, you know, every every month there's a new incident and people are like, hey, we're terribly sorry about this incident. This is a terrible thing. Nobody likes this. But the reality is this is America. And in America, people defend their homes and they defend their nation from being taken over by tyrants or royalty, right? And, like, you cannot get rid of guns in America. Eric Swal Swalwell has you know, a snowball's chance in the hot place of ever making it anywhere on gun control. He's dead in the water. He, his hand is on a third rail, right? And he's spasming as we speak like that because, you know, he's being electrocuted by this issue, right? It's a third rail issue. Gabbard, non-interventionism is a third rail issue, okay? And the same reason, jobs, jobs, okay? Non-intervention, if you're non-interventionist, you're going to deconstruct, you're going to take the time and carefully deconstruct the, multi, the military industrial complex. And if you deconstruct the military industrial complex, you're going to lose a ton of jobs. Those are all third rail topics. All right, that is category one, third rail. You know, you really, like, it's incredibly dangerous. You got to be careful of it. The, by, and all three of those, Gabbard, Swalwell, Inslee, they're done. They are finished, right? They, they have no chance at winning the primary, and they don't even have any chance of winning, uh, uh, they certainly don't have any chance of winning the general. Okay, um, and that yeah, so finished. All right, let's keep let's keep it moving. All right, so we got a sliver. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, we got a sliver dancing down the railways, holding a bass and a Pepsi. Right. All right, so let's talk about the the bass and the sliver. Okay. All right, uh, base only winners. Here you go. Uh, base only winners are candidates that are absolutely rock solid wins for the primary. They're incredibly strong primary candidates that cannot get a single vote beyond the base. Base only. Base only, right? So just Democrats, right? And Hillary already showed that you lose, you lose, you lose with Democrat only, only voters. You have got to get five to 15% of every cheeseburger eating Ford F-150 driver driving American. And if you can't, you lose, all right? So here's the base only uh, Democrats. Booker, Gillibrand, Klobuchar, all right? These are people who will absolutely rock the Democrat base. They're very strong candidates. Democrats love them. Not a single one of them can get a single, uh, you know, um, cheeseburger eating eating Ford F-150 drive-in vote not one of them they, and, and like so you know Booker he does he has projected nothing to show that he has any serious conservative views Klobuchar same thing Gillibrand very hardcore base only right base only you are not going to get uh, 
those cheeseburger eating Ford F-150 driving boats and you have got to get them, all right? Those people are out because they are base only. We have to winnow them because all they can do is win the primary and they will get chewed alive in the in the general. All right, next one, okay? Um, sliver only, sliver only. These are people who can't even get all of the Democrat base, okay? These are people who are going to get, who are absolutely going to rock tiny slivers of America. And frankly, most of these slivers, not all of these slivers, but these are like, these people will, are, they have a, a definite, specific group of people that will follow them, right? But they're small slivers, and these slivers are not even going to remotely add up enough to win even the primary, right? And certainly not the general. Let's talk about him. Uh, Buttigieg, all right? What are his slivers? He crushes the media. He will own every media vote. Like, every journalist, they're covering this thing. They're going to go out and vote, right? Like, and every media uh, person in America, at the macro level, there's going to be a couple exceptions. Breitbart won't vote for him, you know what I mean? But the media, in mass, at the macro level, they love, absolutely love Buttigieg. He was made for them as a candidate. Excuse me. So he was made for them as a candidate. And they love him, right? And he's going to rock the media vote. He's also going to rock coastal elites. He's going to rock co coastal elites on the West Coast and the East Coast. Love him. He's also going to rock every single Ivy League voter, okay? Yale, Harvard, Princeton, Brown, Berkeley. Lock it up. Pete's got every vote, okay? Um, and uh, linguists. He Everybody who loves people who speak multiple languages, boom, you're in, Right? But I want to talk to you about linguists real quick, right? People forget this. I'm an evangelical Christian, right? And I see I see things from a very different view. Like, Pete, Pete is really fascinating, right? So, one, I'm really shocked that he doesn't remember this, you know, as a Christian. But Christian, especially evangelical Christians, we have an incredibly unique view of certain, of really specific topics. Guess what evangelical Christians believe at the macro level about language, right? So here's the here's the key, right? A lot of educated people are like, oh my gosh, he speaks Spanish, he speaks Norwegian, he speaks um, he, he speaks French, he speaks English, he speaks Canadian. That's probably not a language. Uh, and so you know, they're like, oh, that's awesome, right? Evangelical Christians remember, right? We got language when people said when people built the Tower of Babel, right? So people built, you know, in the Bible, the people built the Tower of Babel, and God goes, wait, wait, you're trying to build a tower to get to me and shake my hand? No, that is arrogant. Boom, I am cursing you with language. Cursing you with language. Cursing you with language. Language is a curse, right? Like, so, you know, for evangelical Christians, we didn't forget right? Language is something you should collect. It's literally a curse given to us by God to make it so that we, we we're not able to do things together, right? It's like the rest of the world celebrates language. Like, oh, it's wonderful, right? We're like, uh, you, you remember that's a curse, right? We're like, you know, like, so just be aware, like, it's really fascinating that, uh, that Pete's so into languages, right? But he's going to lock up linguists, right? So that's a sliver. All right. Let's talk about another sliver, uh, a sliver queen, right? The sliver queen is Marianne Williamson, right? Whoo, man. Uh, so everybody who really likes crystals, everybody who likes uh, yoga. Actually, uh, Marianne has very, very distinct, tight competition for yoga vote with Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard's really into yoga as well, right? So, so you know, but every everybody who likes uh, magnetic healing, Everybody who goes to chiropractors, like, you know, these slivers, she is going to lock them up, right? Uh, I heard, I was listening to internet today, very, very funny commentators on, uh, and they talk a lot about politics. They, they said she will lock up wine moms, right? I thought that was interesting, uh, you know, this, to them identifying a specific sliver, wine moms, right? I was like, okay, yeah, I see where you're coming from there. But she is a sliver voter, right? So you got Williamson and you got Budej Edge. And, uh, oh, and Castro. Castro is a sliver, a sliver king, right? He will lock up 
every single person who cares very deeply about immigration. It's a, it's a sliver. You know, it's a sliver of the voters. You lock it up. All right. So we've talked about base, uh, base category for winnowing. We talked about sliver category for winnowing. We have uh, we have talked about rail, the third rail candidate. Let's talk about the last one. This is by far the largest. I'm only going to give you three examples, right? But there are a ton of people in this category, okay? And that is the Pepsi category. All right, let's talk about Pepsi, all right? I got the numbers. February 2018, they did a very large, very expensive poll to determine exactly who... Um, who drinks what? And here's the here's the kicker. When it comes to cola, right? Uh, Coke has 17% of the market, and Pepsi has 10% of the market. Uh, so basically, um, Coke absolutely, without a doubt, today outsells Pepsi because okay? they they didn't close a seven point gap in less than a in a, in a little more than a year, right? They just didn't do it. All right. So that's the issue is. Uh, lots of people love Pepsi. Pepsi is a respected brand. I was at a party the other day, uh, and I was responsible to bring the drinks. I brought diet drinks. I brought uh, non-diet drinks. I had literally like five different flavors, and I had to go back to the store to get Pepsi because some schmuck, you know, some somebody who was expected at the party and a lot of people liked wanted Pepsi, so I had to go back and get Pepsi, right? But here's the thing. At the macro level, Coke is king. Coca-Cola is king right? People like Coca-Cola more than Pepsi and not by a small margin, a fairly large margin, right? And that's the issue, okay? We have a ton of Pepsi candidates. Candidates who are just fine, but they're the same thing as somebody else without either momentum or talent, okay? Uh, so every single person I'm about to talk about, they're the same as Sanders, Biden, Warren, Harris, Yang, okay, actually nobody's like Yang, just to be clear, um, he is truly unique, um, there, they, there are candidates here that are the same as those other four candidates, right, but what's the point of getting them, what is the point of getting them if you already have Coke, right, uh, and because, and, and the reality is between those four, between Biden, Sanders, Harris and um, and Warren, there is either momentum or talent or both, right? So if you ain't got the momentum and the talent or both of those things, and you're spouting the same nonsense, right? Or even the same gold content, right? But you don't have the same momentum or talent. What is the point of you? You're duplicative. You're Pepsi at the party, right? A few people are going to pick you, but the, but we are going for a victory. We don't need a few people. We need the most people. And it's absolutely critical that we get the most. So when you're going to an election, right, if you want to go to a party and you want to have served the most drinks, you better be serving uh, Coke over Pepsi because the numbers show Coke is going to beat Pepsi, right? All right, so, so let's talk about Pepsi candidates, right? Woo, boy, there's a lot of them. All right, Delaney, Bennett, O'Rourke, okay? And there's a ton more. I want to keep my, my groupings consistent. I gave you three examples. There's so many more candidates that are Pepsi. But like Delaney, Bennett, O'Rourke, what on earth does a single one of them have that Sanders or Biden isn't, isn't already repping with more momentum and more talent? Nothing, absolutely nothing. They are so completely unnecessary, so duplicative, so Pepsi, right? That's it. That's all four categories, right? You got the third rail, right? You got the base only. You got the sliver only, right? And um, base, yeah, sliver. Uh, you have the sliver dancing on the rail with the base and the Pepsi. And the last one is you have the Pepsi category. And I gave you three examples of one. That chops 12 people right off the base. Schwack, gone, right? And we need that. We need that, okay? It's incredibly important that we, as Democrat voters, choose who gets winnowed, right? And we can winnow them now. We don't need to give any of these people a single more minute of time or attention, right? And here's why it's important that we choose, we choose, this rather than let the waiting for the media 
we cannot allow the media to winnow the candidates for three reasons, okay? Ignorance, ineptitude, interest, okay? The, um, the, uh, the media has already showed that many of them are inept, okay? That they do not know what they're doing. That was incredibly well displayed in 2016, right? That there are people who are just doing that job that are not good at it. I don't think it's the majority of them, but there are people who are just, they're not good at that job. And they really, you know, no one should be following them or listening to them, right? Because the media just was like, hey, this is unlocked. Don't worry, everybody. Hillary's got it, right? Like, And, and you know, they, they crushed the spirit of a lot of people. People were really upset about that. And I really think the media was absolutely one of the main culprits for what happened in 2016, okay? They let people relax, right? And, uh, and, and based on nothing, the numbers were 100% wrong, you know, so it was, they were inept, right? Ignorant, right? That means they don't have the knowledge, right? They don't have the knowledge, right? And I think there are a lot of people in the media who are ignorant. They simply don't have the knowledge because they don't have the knowledge, right? It's hard to get knowledge. Knowledge is difficult. You have to pay attention. You you have to take notes. Like, you, you got to track, right? And not everybody in the media is doing that, right? Like, because they got to get blowouts and, like... Um, you know, uh, buy nice suits and, and, and go to the gym, right? Like, you know, it's hard to get knowledge while you're doing all that other stuff. And it's important, right? Like for, especially for them, image is a big thing for media, right? So, so ignorance is now, uh, now ignorant is, ineptitude is a negative term, but ignorance is not really in a negative term. I am ignorant of how to change the oil in this car, right? But I'm not, you know, I'm not an ignorant person overall. Everybody has ignorance in certain areas, Right and actually, clearly, the media should not have ignorance over over politics. But according to 2016, it's incredibly clear that there are a lot of people who are ignorant. And then last is interest. Right, uh, with the media, you have to watch very carefully. Does somebody have a commercial interest in suppressing a candidate? Does somebody have an ideological interest in suppressing a candidate? So that's why we we as the voters have to winnow, have to do our own winnowing. Can we cannot allow the media to winnow candidates for us. But that is, that's four solid winnowing categories. Uh, that redu- that takes 12 candidates, just wipes them off the map, right? I think it's very safe and, and fine to not deal with those candidates. Uh, and that leaves us with the fast five, Biden, Warren, Sanders, uh, Harris, and Yang, all right? Uh, that's my take. Uh, I'd love to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Please consider liking and subscribing and have a wonderful millennium.